Thank you for tuning in. We are witnessing a very unusual time in history with this appalling pandemic. The more we learn in order to deal with it, and our health in general, the better it is. And we have a fascinating keynote update presented by Bill Falloon at the Da Vinci Mastermind Conference. I'm going to be describing some controversial topics. Some of these may startle or disturb some of you. But the unfortunate reality, the harsh reality we are all facing is we continue to age despite the many, many interventions that we are engaged in. And I'm turning age 67 this year. And if we fail, and I use the word we, everyone in this room, and all the four to 500,000 supporters of my Life Extension Group, if we collectively fail to not integrate what's occurring in the laboratory model right now, I'm talking about radical lifespan extension, which I'm gonna show you many slides about. I'm talking about indices of age reversal. This is occurring in the laboratory setting. But if we fail, to rapidly transition that technology into human clinical trials, quick clinical, clinical trials, and then into clinical medical practice. If we fail, I'm scheduled to die in 18 years. At age 67, if you do most of what you're supposed to do right, you're lucky to make it to 85, or you may not. It's kind of scary. And that's why I'm talking to groups wherever I can to accelerate the pace of translational medicine from the laboratory bench into people's bodies. I'm tired of the animals getting all the benefits. And what's fantastic is the science is there. Now, for those who don't know me, I set up a group called Life Extension 44 years ago in 1977 in a little industrial bay in Pompano Beach, Florida. For three years, I went on all the local radio talk shows. I got the newspapers coming in doing articles, but there was zero interest, not one nickel of revenue. And in 1980, we started a newsletter called Anti-Aging News. And then some people at least would write $27 a year checks to subscribe to our newsletter. And we are currently the world's largest consumer-based anti-aging medical group. We send out our Life Extension magazine every single month. We have published consistently since 1980, where we look at the peer-reviewed published literature and then convert that information into lay language so that all of our readers can potentially benefit from the information that we publish. And we've been doing this for a long time. We've got a track record I'll show you at the end of my presentation, but we typically identify better ways to prevent and treat disease that are published, but they're not paid attention to by the conventional mainstream and sometimes alternative doctors. They have good intentions, they just, they miss out on it. So our history, 1980, anti-aging news, 1986, we switched to Life Extension Report, and then the volume of new information became so overwhelming, we switched to Life Extension Magazine. And we, last month, we mailed out over 400,000 individual copies of Life Extension Magazine. That is a world record for us, by the way, in our 44 years of existence, never sent out that many magazines. And we also send out tens of thousands to doctor's offices who they give to their patients to keep them informed as to what they can do to preserve their precious health. Now, one of my controversial contentions is that it may be possible using existing interventions today to reverse, at least partially, aging in people. We might be able to do it today, and the fantastic news is it's no longer Bill Falloon and Life Extension doing it by myself. Groups like WebMD, now this is a rather conventional website. They're rather hostile towards alternative medicine. And just a couple months ago, they published an article talking about is there a cure for aging? And they also discussed about immortality. This didn't used to occur in the past. We would be persecuted, ridiculed, prosecuted. And nowadays, you've got credentialed publications talking about engineering, re-engineering our molecular biology so that we never die. And they talked about groups like us. We're not just looking to slow down aging a little bit and live a little longer. We're trying to prevent death itself. And they used some examples in the WebMD article about certain species that seem to live forever. The immortal jellyfish and lobsters. They secrete a large quantity of a youthful enzyme that may keep them alive forever if they're not eaten first. So at least there's examples in the animal world of which death is not one of those problems like it is right now. And this came, this was on the WebMD website. 
this chart, now it wasn't our website or, or anyone else's, this is this conventional group talking about by around the year 2065, we may be living to 900 to 1,000 years. It's made it into the mainstream in a huge, huge way. And a lot of that is being assisted by people like Dr. Barzelli. He is pioneering the metformin trial, where he's going to take a large group of people and see if metformin by itself can slow and or reverse certain aging processes. Our hat's off to him, but we've been recommending metformin since 1995. We already know what its benefits are and limitations. So if these people enter his trial, all they're gonna get is metformin, I'm afraid they're gonna get a limited benefit. They ought to be involved in the comprehensive strategy to slow and reverse our aging processes. Now, Fortune Magazine every year has an annual investor's guide. This is read by the titans of industry, Biofarm, the investment community, and they talked about the need to understand and address the biology of aging. And they used some examples with Greg Fahey's work with Intervene Immune. He was able to reverse aging two and a half biological years, as we know, and other people with therapeutic plasma exchange. It's catching the attention of mainstream people so that they're publishing articles that talk about people living uh, a long time. And the absolute need, this is now a requirement, to reverse at least certain aspects of biological aging to protect the United States from a health care cost tsunami. If we don't reverse aging, Medicare, Medicaid, private insurance, it just can't afford to take care of lots of old sick people. And as a side benefit they mention, reversing aging, more productive years, longer life, all kind of nice things. So they concluded their editorial with a question and a suggestion. Why don't we launch an Operation Warp Speed for biological aging the way they've done against COVID? Well, we've been trying to do that life extension now for 44 years, and it is now coming about. I'm going to play just a brief clip from a Phil Donahue show appearance I made in March of 1995, and you'll see what I've been doing to try to make what's happening today happen much sooner. Is it possible if you take enough vitamins and there are pills out there that can keep you young forever? What essentially is the point that you're making here? That there are on the shelf around the world uh, many, many companies in other countries that are sharing with their customers uh, material which enhances life, which makes you feel younger and makes you live longer. Do I understand your position? Medicines available in other countries are five to 30 years ahead of United States medicine, depending on which classification of drug you look at. Right. And as a result, Americans are the last to get the benefits of these breakthrough medications. They pay the highest prices in the world for their prescription drugs. So we move forward from 1995, where the idea of slowing or reversing aging was so unique. I got on the Phil Donahue show. Got a lot of free publicity because very few people understood what we were really trying to seek. January 2020, study coming out of the prestigious Buck Institute in the C. elegans model of aging, and it's got a lot of publicity around the world. They were able to mutate just two cellular pathways and extend the lifespan in the C. elegans model four to 500 percent. And this is the equivalent of humans living to be over 400 years of age. It happened, and the media talked about these two pathways, which most of you are already addressing. It's not going to enable us to live to be 400, but we're taking metformin. We're doing intermittent fasting in order to improve insulin signaling. We're taking certain mTOR inactivators. We want to suppress excess mTOR in our body. So what we are already doing, and they made it clear, the pathways they used to extend the C. elegans model of aging to the human equivalent over 400 years, they exist in our bodies. We just have to figure out a way to modulate those pathways and more so we can theoretically live to that incredible period of time. And this is just one example of a scientific study that is over a year old, and I don't know if anyone's trying to translate that into people yet. It's an absolute tragedy if they're not doing that. And the uh, opportunity that we have right now to intervene into aging. We've never had so many different options. Now, I suspect most of you are engaged in some or all of these interventions. How many here are taking metformin, by the way, the, the drug metformin? Uh, do I only see two, two hands? Two hands? Well, okay. Uh, I'll, I'll convince you tomorrow to take metformin. I don't sell it, by the way. It's a prescription drug, but I think it's a great way to slow aging, reduce degenerative disease risk. And what's happening is we've got a lot of people 
who are deferring experimental interventions. I'm not one of them, I'm doing everything right now, self-experimentation, working with doctors, wherever we can. If I recommend something, typically I've done it already, and so has my uh, research group. But there's people who are waiting until they become very frail, develop multiple comorbidities, and they come to us and they say, well now it's time for age reversal. And I have to flat out say for the most part, I'm afraid you've got too many illnesses, you're too frail, you're hanging by a thread, and if we do something aggressive, we may push you right off the cliff. So delaying age reversal interventions can be something where you reach a point of no return, at least with today's technology. So move forward to January 2021. Wall Street Journal reports on a spectacular study in which they were able to more than double the lifespan of pejuroid mice using just a simple CRISPR gene editing technique. And this is an optimistic extrapolation, but if we were able to achieve the same benefit in humans by doing combination gene therapy, this study in which they more than doubled lifespan in pejuroid mice could theoretically enable people to live over 160 years of age. And a more relevant study, literally published the same day by the way, was normal aged mice. They were able to use CRISPR to just suppress one toxic gene, the CAT7 gene that's involved in cellular senescence. And by targeting that CAT7 gene, that's just one out of many that could be, they were able to extend the lifespan in normal aged mice by 25%. They were able to improve their appearance, improve their grip strength. And at the bottom of the slide, you can see that mice and humans have pretty much the same genetic code, though in slightly different forms. So if a gene therapy is working in mice, there's at least a good probability it might have some benefits in people. And we don't have that kind of benefit translating with everything else sometimes. A rat can live a long time and people just don't get the benefit. Gene therapy, it may translate properly. So again, a, an extrapolation, if we are able to do just minimal CRISPR, minimal CRISPR type work, we may be able to take our lifespan and get the average up to 98 as opposed to 78. Ooh, that's a major improvement. And some of us think we're just gonna make it to 98 anyway. Well, we're, we will if we get into the research and take some self-experimenting therapies. So the great news is the media doesn't ridicule us like they used to. They're reporting on positive findings in which aging is going in reverse. CRISPR is a major way that's being done. And this slide is really interesting that CRISPR was able to reduce cholesterol and triglycerides. And the significance of this is, I personally take about 100 different drugs, nutrients, hormones. I take a gobs of them every day. But if my genes could be edited back to the age when I was, let's say, 16, 17 years of age, I could potentially do without all of the supplements, drugs, and hormones, and all the other experimental interventions I'm engaged in. That's how promising CRISPR may be. And the New York Times did a, a nice write-up about a book called The Code Breaker. It reported on some people who won a Nobel Prize for their work on CRISPR-Cas9. And they're talking about engineering people so that we are disease resistant. And this kind of technology is getting headline media news around the world. And it's letting people know that we've got a very different future than what our ancestors did. A Bunch of people got together to decide we need to just do something about aging. This was a conference that I sponsored back in 2009. And you see a circle around my face and right underneath me is Aubrey de Grey. And there's a number of other famous people in this room. We had one mission and that is identify one validated way to reverse biological aging. And the outcome of that was zero. After three days of intensive discussions talking about a lot of potential ways, we could not identify one single validated method to reverse aging. Move forward just 12 years and we've got a whole lot of them. We've got dozens of potential ways to intervene into aging, and to us, it's only a matter of putting the puzzle together, putting all these interventions together, studying them in older people, and see what works, what doesn't, what can be interchanged, dosing changes. That's all we need to do to accomplish what is going on. Now, I'm gonna play a short little video. This is Dr. Barzelli, who pioneered the metformin research study. He's gonna tell you something that maybe the most significant news of this conference. There's going to, in, in May, it's going to be announced. There's a huge uh, nonprofit uh, organization 
that um, is coming out of the Middle East and is going to spend billion dollars a year to stop aging pretty much, mm -hmm. okay? And I think that's what we need. Mm -hmm. um, this is like a Gates Foundation right effort. Can you imagine one billion dollars a year being spent to defeat aging? I can't wait till that media report comes out. So clustered, regularly interspaced, short, palindromic repeats. CRISPR, this is, in our opinion, the most effective way for us to defeat biological aging in our lifetime. In our lifetime, it's gotten a lot of publicity and to elaborate more in the Wall Street Journal study in which they use CRISPR to more than double the lifespan of the progeria mice, you look at, it was published by the way in Nature, and in Nature when they publish something it usually garners media attention, but people suffer from progeria, it's a rare genetic disorder, and what happens is your genes cause your cells to produce a toxic protein called progerin. They're, therefore the name progeria, and progeria children, well, they live 12 to 20 years, and they suffer accelerated aging. It's a horrible, horrible disease. But you look at these two pictures and the descriptions underneath. You have the unedited progeria mice, the, they're rapid age mice. They only live about seven months, and they show signs of aging very early in their life. The edited mice on the right-hand side, at 11 months, they're scampering around the cage like young mice. They're looking like young mice, behaving like young mice, and they lived about 17 months as opposed to the 7.1 months of the unedited mice. And that was done by doing something that's not that complicated. It may seem that way, but there are two DNA base pairs that are involved with progeria. Those are TNA, that's the red ones marked at the bottom. Uh, what you want to do is replace those with a C and G DNA ba base pair so you don't produce that toxic progerian, uh, uh, that substance. So what they did, relatively simple, is they took a DNA base editor, inserted it into an in inactive virus, and then infected the mice with progeria uh, with this uh, inactive virus, but a B DNA base editor, and they were able to change the toxic TNA progeroid genes to the more safe and, and dependable GNC uh, genes. And in doing so, they were able to create median lifespan of 510 days in the edited mice compared to only 215 in the unedited mice. And their health span was improved. And they feel this may be available to humans at some point in time. So to optimistically extrapolate on this mouse study, we know that people typically today live about 78 years. If we are able to incorporate combination gene editing therapy into our bodies, we may be living to over 160 years using CRISPR technology. So the great news is George Church did a study, got published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences in which one dose of a combination gene therapy improved heart, vascular, kidney function, and maybe most exciting to people who are wanting to eat a lot more than what they know they should, complete reversal of obesity and type 2 diabetes with the mice being able to eat as much as they wanted. That's going to be our future. If we like to eat a lot of food uh, in the future with CRISPR editing, our cells will be able to accommodate that food without making us fat, without making us diabetic. So we've got a real opportunity here in the mouse model, translate into people, and we're going to live longer and not have all the vascular problems and enjoy a lot of healthy eating. So George Church has gotten a lot of publicity in the media uh, talking about his plan to reverse aging in people by the year 2030. That is his timetable. And as far as I know, George Church, like me, is an immortalist. He never wants to die. So his research has a lot more going behind it, along with his affiliates, than uh, what a lot of other scientists are. And we interact with George Church's lab all the time, by the way. So 60 Minutes gave a real nice coverage to George Church's work back in December 2019. And I'm going to play just a very brief excerpt from that 60 Minutes documentary. We have mapped the human genome, and in just the last few years, we have learned to read and write DNA like software. And you're about to see a few breakthroughs in waiting that would transform human health. For a preview of this revolution in evolution, we met George Church, a world-leading geneticist whose own DNA harbors many eccentricities and a few genes for genius. 
One of the things your lab is working on is reversing aging. That's right. How is that possible? Reversing aging is one of these things that is easy to dismiss, to say, to say either we don't need it or it's impossible or both. Oh, we need it. <laughs> okay, we need it. That's good. We, okay. we can agree on that. Well, aging reversal is something that's been proven about eight different ways in animals um, where you can get, you know, faster reaction times or, you know, cognitive or repair of damaged tissues. Proven eight different ways? Why isn't this available? What is available to mice? <laughs> in Lucky Mice, Church's lab added multiple genes that improved heart and kidney function and levels of blood sugar. What's the time horizon on age reversal in humans? That's in clinical trials right now in dogs, and so that veterinary product might be a couple years away, and then that takes another 10 years to get through the human clinical trials. Wow, isn't that incredible? Dr. Church, starting in 2015, predicted that his CRISPR gene editing technology by 2030 would enable aging to be vanquished, all viral infections to be prevented, Wow, we've got to make it to 2030. Got to do that, people. I'm going to let you know different ways to do that throughout my presentation. But some people feel that uh, gene editing is something they don't want to do. And, and by the way, all of us in this room have unedited genes for the most part. Aging, normal aging, unfortunately, causes, causes our gene expression pathways to go haywire. So on the left, you see a manuscript of how we used to draft articles for our Life Extension magazine before we had the word processors, and they were a mess. They were just an absolute mess with typos, paragraphs out of place. They didn't look nice. On the right is a precisely edited copy. And the question really is, where do you want to be on this? On the left-hand side, you can remain unedited and go through normal degenerative aging processes or have your genes edited in a way that you forestall or reverse those pathological aging processes. So I'm just trying to make things simple wherever I can so people can understand it. Wall Street Journal did a very nice write-up about the technology of CRISPR, how it's going to eliminate genetic diseases and slow aging, reverse aging, do all these wonderful things, but it mainly dealt with the moral concerns. Should we produce super smart children? And I thought, isn't that kind of a dumb question to ask? Is there anyone here who wants to have a child with learning disabilities, a child with manic depression, a, a child with any kind of mental health issue? Do we want that? Or wouldn't it be nice to prevent that from the beginning so we have smarter children who can then accomplish greater objectives, maybe keep us all alive forever? So anyway, great data in this Wall Street Journal article, but again, the criticism about is it moral? That's the way it's been with everything, including cardiopulmonary resuscitation, blood transfusions. It's always been that issue with new medical technology. Now, our Life Extension Group, we, we partners with the Methuselah Foundation, and we sequenced the genetic uh, code of the bowhead whale. The reason we did that is these whales very rarely get cancer and they live in the wild up to 268 years of age. So we wanted to see what was in their gene sequence that enables them to live so long. And we've donated that to George Church's laboratory and anyone else who wants it, by the way, it's open sourced so that they can study that code and attempt to edit our genes to resemble those of the bowhead whale. And even more exciting, the bowhead whale may have genes that we lack that enable it to have this incredible healthy longevity living in the wild where there is no access to medicine. So that's just one of the projects that we are partnering with with Harvard and George Church's laboratory. We're on the phone with them at least once a week figuring out ways to accelerate their research and bring it into the human arena. So this is a shortcut potentially to induce some of the favorable gene expression changes requiring CRISPR, instead using CRISPR to edit methylation patterns in a way that we use methylation to control our rate of aging. And it's pretty much an on-off switch they're talking about, a control where we, we control the methylation patterns so we can activate favorable genes in our body that keep us young and deactivate the gene expression changes that cause us to grow older, cause us to develop malignancies, all the problems associated with aging. So this is brand new technology, they're calling it CRISPR-2. It may result in a shortcut so that we can start garnering these benefits long before they become available on the clinical setting side. So the Financial Times, they talked about COVID being a disease of aging, and then they also talked about anti-aging therapies being developed right now 
could be in the 21st century what antibiotics were in the 20th. And if that prediction is true, we've got a lot of healthy life ahead of us. The question is, we're just entering right now this 21st century, and if they delay it till 2050 or 2060, a lot of us in this room won't be available. But they also reported on the fact that COVID has frightened people into doing something about old age. They now realize how vulnerable they are because of the aging process. So I wanna thank everyone for your multi-decade support of Life Extension. Some of you in here have been members of our group that long. And I wanna conclude with, well, reminding people, I sell dietary supplements. If you take dietary supplements and you purchase them from us, you indirectly help support age reversal research. I have a full-time staff of people working on the clinical trials protocols and pushing them through the bureaucratic labyrinth of, of delays. But nonetheless, this is how I fund research via the sales of dietary supplements. Now this entire presentation will be at age-reversal.net. So it gives you a chance to pay attention to my talking and then I always refer to that website and you can see everything that I'm gonna talk about. I'm gonna conclude right now with a little bit of a recap it's only about a minute and a half and a few new slides that I put in here and then we'll move on to the next presentation. This brings us to the end of our special show for today. I'm Richard Peretz. Thank you for being with us. The preceding program was sponsored by RCP Productions Incorporated and Friends of the Shalom Show.